Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness in our lives. You have led us by your spirit, so we know that it's not an accident that we are here today. So give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying and a heart that will receive. I humble myself before you, Lord, as your mouthpiece, and I thank you that your word is in my mouth, that you cover me with the shadow of your hand. Thank you, Lord, that it's not human wisdom at work, but it is a demonstration of your Holy Spirit's power that man's faith does not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of you, the almighty God. And so we commit ourselves unto you. We commit this day unto you and pray that you would be glorified through your son in Jesus' name. And we declare together, amen. Now, last week, we interrupted part three of our Victory 2020 series to address the fear that has infiltrated our heart and our community as a result of this coronavirus. Now, today, our intention was to go back to part three, the blessed life. But because so many people remain shaken and unsettled, I think it only appropriate that we actually continue into part four of the same series, Victory 2020, with our focus now being on fear. You see, we may be in a storm as a nation and or individually, but we cannot allow or entertain fear because we are a people of faith. Romans says, the just shall live by faith. And since we cannot live in faith and fear simultaneously, I, as your pastor, call us to faith. I adjure you, I charge each one of us to believe, to each one of us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for this is the work, the work of God, that you believe on him whom he sent, according to John 6, verse 29. In other words, our work, our labor, our effort, our pursuit, our task as Christians is to believe. And so we begin in the Gospel of Luke to hear what it means to believe in Jesus even during difficult situations or desperate times. And so we pick it up in chapter 18, verse 35. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho that a certain blind man sat by the road begging and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. And so they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by and he cried out saying, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 40, and so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith, your faith, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. And so the question for each one of us today is, what do you want Jesus to do for you? You see, in the same way that Jesus stopped for this blind man, he is able and willing to stop for you, hear you, and provide for you because of love. You are his priority no matter what's going on, whether good or bad. He has not, nor will he ever forget you, abandon you, overlook you, discard you because he is the Messiah. 
Messiah. He is your Savior, your Helper, your Redeemer. So there is nothing that's going on in your life that he does not care about. There is no want or need that our Father's love cannot handle. But I need us to notice this morning that Jesus still asked the man who was obviously blind, what do you want me to do for you? And so clearly, there must be an active pursuit on our part. And this blind man demonstrates for us what it looks like. He shows us tenacity. He shows us effort. He shows us a work. He shows us a pursuit of the answer, Jesus Christ himself. He's not passive. Oh, well, maybe it'll happen sooner or later. He's not presumptuous. Well, surely Jesus sees me here blind. Surely he's going to come over and help me. No, He's not passive or presumptuous, but from his heart, he demonstrates what it means to believe. And you and I can do the same. We can choose to believe and see a miracle. I wonder if you'll declare wherever you're seated, I choose to believe. Come on, say it again and again and again. I choose to believe. Father, I declare that this is a house, Hope Cathedral, that believes and does not doubt, we choose to believe. And so I invite you now to pull down your note sheet from the top right portion of your, of your screen and let's fill in the blank number one, that to believe is to recognize. To believe is to recognize. There in Isaiah chapter 35, we're looking at verse 4, it says, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Well, this is an Old Testament promise that any good Jewish person would know about, about because they are waiting upon their Messiah. That when our Christ, the Christ would arrive, that he would save his people from their sin and that he would also do miracles. And so the fact that this blind man would call Jesus the son of David means that he recognized. He recognized Jesus as the Christ, the one that the prophet Isaiah would say is coming and the one who would come and open the eyes of the blind. The man couldn't see physically, but he had more clarity than the multitudes because he didn't just follow Jesus, but he pressed into Jesus. He exerted an energy. He made an effort because he recognized that through Jesus, healing was possible. And so he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus would stop. He would stop in that moment because here was someone who believed. They believed in him as the answer. They believed in him as the solution. So my sister and brother, the question is posed to each one of us. What do you want Jesus to do for you? You may know what you want, but if you believe, if you recognize Jesus as your answer, as your solution, then you'll see a change. So you must stop entertaining that menacing voice that says, what are you going to do now? 
You've got to stop listening to that lying voice that clouds your thoughts with the worst case scenarios and presents the what if this happens and what if that happens. That voice that harasses you for answers that you simply don't have or brings up issues to make you doubt. Those things that come up in your mind to remind you of previous disappointment and appeal to your sense of reason rather than your power in faith, that voice that wants to keep you talking in the negative about your job, your money, your family, your future, and your hope. Hear me this morning. That is the voice of the naysayer, the voice of a deceiver, the voice of the tormentor and the liar. This is a voice that has been used as in ages old. It's a trick that has always been used. It worked for Eve. It worked on Israel. It worked for the disciples. And it is the same voice that is trying to work on you. Reject it and choose to believe. Recognize your Savior and call on him. Jesus, you are my Messiah. Jesus, you are my Savior. Jesus, you are my deliverer. Jesus, my rock. Jesus, my shepherd. Jesus, my hope. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Recognize him because that's what it means to believe. To believe is to recognize. Number two, fill in your note sheet. To believe is to have confidence. There in Hebrews chapter 4, we're looking at verse 1. It says, therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. I wonder if you say where you are, it wasn't mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. I want to say it again. Verse 3, we who have believed do enter that rest. You see, the confidence of the blind man came because he recognized. But the confidence was seen by his actions. He got up from a beggar's position. He ignored the voice of the naysayers who were warning him to be quiet. And then he cried out with everything that was in him. And when Jesus beckoned him to come, he made his way through the crowd as a blind man, a blind man who had confidence. My sister, my brother, when you believe there is an assurance, there is an anticipation, you haven't seen one thing change, but you have a confidence. That's called entering into his rest. The Greek word for rest means tranquility. And so it's with confidence there comes a state of tranquility where you're no more filled with worry, no more filled with fretting. You just rest. You enter a calm. There is a tranquility. See, that is our action when we choose to believe. The scripture says that Israel never entered into his rest, a place of tranquility. Why? Because they did not believe. Hebrews 3.19 says, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief. You see, in every situation, they doubted. They second-guessed promises made. They voiced their fears and forgot God's history with them. They never showed confidence in God, and so they never experienced the fullness of what was promised. Hear me this morning. What you believe is revealed by your 
actions. And when there is a confidence, it means that you have entered into his rest. Hope Cathedral, enter into the rest of our Father. For the Lord is our confidence, and he will keep our feet from being caught, according to Proverbs 3. So enter into his rest in your marriage, because he is your confidence. So we do pray, Father, you said that the king's heart is in your hand and you switch it like a water course wherever you want it to go. So I pray for my spouse that you would fix their heart so it's turned towards you. Your confidence is in him, it's not in your spouse, so now you can rest. You enter into his rest in your health. That he is our confidence. So yes, we pray, Father, I believe that your name is above every name. That every name is subject to the name of Jesus. So I declare in the name of Jesus that sickness and disease cannot defile my temple because my temple is holy. So I declare it cannot, Lord, here in Jesus' name. Your confidence is not not in the x-ray. Your confidence is not in your flesh. Your confidence is not in the doctor's report. Your confidence is in him. So now you can rest. Yeah, you can rest. When we enter into his rest for our country, we declare he is our confidence. And so we pray, Father, for this plague that sweeps the nation. You said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Therefore, I humble myself self with prayer and fasting. I repent on behalf of this nation just like my forefathers and we, you said, would be healed according to your word. Why? Because he is our confidence. So we enter into his rest. We don't worry about another report. We don't worry about another projection. We don't worry about another prediction because he is our our confidence. See, when you have confidence, you act like it by entering into his rest, his calm, into tranquility. To believe is to recognize. To believe is to recognize and it is to have a confidence. And finally, number three, fill in your note sheet. To believe is to be persistent to be persistent. There in Romans chapter 4, we're looking at verse 19. It says, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced, fully convinced, sounds like confidence, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You see, when you choose to believe God, the world will not relate because it is a process. But I want to help us out this morning, Hope Cathedral, that in the same way that we put seed in the ground and believe that a plant will come if we water the seed, in the same way that we may not see a baby bump, but when a woman says that she's expecting, we celebrate with her. In the same way that we cannot see electricity but plug in our devices and expect our item to be charged over time. So it is when we choose to believe God, we are in a process. 
It may not be easy, but we remain, we persist, we don't quit. Like the blind man who continued pursuing Jesus, calling his name, even when the naysayers said stop. Or like Abraham, who in this passage continued to give glory to God, even when the facts contradicted the promise that God made, he continued to believe. It's called persistence. And so we believe. We believe the promise with persistence. When the issues are hard, we believe. When the challenging circumstances confront us, we choose to believe. When fear knocks or disappointment tries to linger, when we're disappointed, when we're frustrated, when others quit, when we're the minority, if we get laid off or something gets shut off, we choose to believe. We are persistent. We believe because he who promised is faithful. We believe because as he was with Moses, he was with Joshua. As he was with Joshua, he was with David. As he was with David, he was with Moses and Esther and Paul and Peter. As he was with the blind man, he is with us. So we choose to believe. We believe with persistence. So I invite you to pray with me. Now may the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We choose to believe and we resist being anxious for anything. But with everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we make our request known to you, Father, that you, Father, are the one who provides for us as your sons and your daughters. So we receive health in our body and strengthen our bones. We receive the promise that they that seek you shall lack for no good thing. We receive your word that our light would shine, O oh God. We receive your word and pray that we would not grieve your spirit during this time. And so, Lord, we call on you that we would have your peace that surpasses all understanding. May it guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus, because to Today we choose to enter into your rest. Right where you are, I just want you to minister to yourself and tell them I'm choosing to enter into your rest today, Lord. I repent for my worry. I repent for second guessing you. I don't want to sound like Israel. I don't want an evil heart of unbelief. I want to be a one who believes you. That when your eyes go to and fro across the earth, looking for him whose heart is loyal, may I be found loyal before you. That I praised you when the sun was shining, and I'll praise you when the raindrops fall. I'll praise you when things are happy, but I'll also praise you when I'm sad. I'll praise you when I understand and when I don't understand anything. I'm choosing to be loyal, Lord God. I want you to show yourself strong in my life. Come on, lift up your hands right where you are and say, here I am, Lord. I am yours and you are mine. I cry out to you, Father, that you would help me, that though I stumble, I will not fall. I look to you, Jesus, because you are the author and the finisher of my faith. As you finish me, as you refine me, may I come forth as liquid gold. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that we pray all over this place, all over your space in your home. Lift up your hands to the Lord and declare, I am yours, Lord, and you you are mine. I choose to believe. Remember now your covenant with me. In the name of your son, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Because we, we believe. We believe. That's who we are. We are believers and not doubters. So we will not faint. But we will be strong in the Lord. We will walk in the power of his might. Because when we are faithful, the faithful shall abound with blessing. So you be faithful where you are, no matter what the situation is. You be faithful. 
I don't care if everything is falling apart. Be faithful before the Lord your God and lift your hands to heaven. No matter how you feel, I want you to be faithful and call on him with a confidence. Call on him with persistence because you recognize that the Lord your God has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever he said in his word is truth. His truth endures forever. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, Father. If after hearing this message, you can say from the sincerity of your heart that you don't have a confidence, that you don't even know how to persist because you have never asked Christ to come into your life. You have still been living in your own strength, in your own power, by your own ingenuity, your own wittiness, your own understanding. Well, I want to invite you to change your decision, to make a decision for Christ, to choose today to believe. It's not about a feeling. It's about a decision. It's a decision to believe in your heart. When you believe, it's not about head. It's not about feelings. It's about your heart. For man believes unto righteousness with the heart. And so if you're here this morning as one who says, I need Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I want him to be in my life. I need my life to turn towards him so I'm no longer looking horizontally, but I'm looking to him. Well, I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. I need to know who I'm praying for, so I'm going to ask that you click the button under me to let me know that, yes, I want Jesus into my life. I want him to be my Savior. I need a king. I need a Lord and I want to pray with you. So right now, I invite you to lower your head and close your eyes, and let's pray together. My Father, I know without Jesus I'm lost. I repent for my sin. I believe that Jesus died for me and that he forgives all of my wrongs. I believe that Jesus is alive. And I make him the leader of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me with your power. I choose to believe in Jesus' name. And you as a believer can say amen. 